G'day everyone, welcome to this weekly update for what's been happening in Australia and also around global markets. Uh, the week in America was exceedingly volatile. We had uh, four of the five sessions with the Dow Jones uh, being either up or down by in excess of 250 points. And that was in contrast to a lot of other markets and the Australian market moved higher uh, on every session. So um, what appears to have happened last week is that uh, the computers really uh, took over last week and um, and were basically running according to the the programs that uh, that are out there and and so I think the market action last week is is a bit of a mystery and probably can be largely ignored. There are some things to be concerned about that the markets are pointing to, but equally I think. Um, things are a lot better than what uh, than what some people are saying. Anyway, let's have a look at the price action for uh, the week. And the S&P index ended up losing 56 points on the week. And probably half of that went uh, in the last hour on Friday. Now, corporate earnings uh, are definitely losing some momentum. They're still reasonably okay, but they are losing momentum compared to what we saw in the last couple of quarters of 2014. So that's as a general statement. And sales are being impacted even more than, than profits are, and that's uh, partly because of uh, the, the headwinds of global currencies. The American stronger American dollar is meaning that companies that have got sales in Europe uh, in particular are seeing um, those sales negatively impacted. And that's probably going to continue for a little while to come. However, the very best growth stocks, which are the ones that I focus on, are still going very nicely. And uh, the earnings season is uh, as robust as any that we've seen throughout 2014. But my strong advice to you would be to definitely be uh, very wary of the rest of the stock market in America. Now, 1990 is an important support level, and we're close to that now, so I'm, I'm not talking here on the fundamentals, I'm talking technically. Uh, 1990 is an important level to hold. I'd, I'd get a little bit nervous if 1990 broke. And if 1820 uh, breaks, which is the October low, then I think all bets are off. I'd be extremely concerned about um, a significant trend change in the American market. So they're two key support levels to be watching. Now, just before I go and look at the charts, I just want to examine a little bit more what I think last week was all about with that extreme volatility. Uh, everyone knows that there's a lot of algorithmic trading programs out there that uh, where decisions really aren't being made by, by humans. They're being made by computers that have been pre-programmed. And I think last week that algorithmic trading really did have an outsized impact on the market. And... I think that's why so many trading sessions, when, when you look at it, they finished very close to or right on their absolute high or low of the day. So it was like the, the computers took over, they set a certain direction, and then they just basically chased their tail um, with stop loss triggers occurring throughout the, the session so that they finished either on their highs or their lows. So in the short term, this sort of action just swamps logic and fundamental value. So that's why I say I think you really should ignore it because it's likely to turn around and reverse itself quite quickly. Now there are some worrying signs from some of the big industrial stocks. Uh, comments that came out of General Electric, uh, came out of uh, Caterpillar, which is the, the biggest uh, resource equipment supplier in the world, uh, and a raft of other industrial stocks that have got global sales um, are sending a few worrying signals. So that's why I say I think the, the very best stocks are fine. Uh, their earnings are still very robust, and we saw terrific reports from some of the digital technology stocks, uh, especially Apple came out with a sensational um, earnings report. But a lot of the rest of the market, there are a few worrying signs. So stock selection, absolutely vital. Now, just looking at sentiment, it's still positive in, uh, in America as a whole. So I think that's the key thing there. Just... A quick uh, comment on trend analysis in the very short term, so over the last few weeks, um, it's somewhat negative and markets are definitely oversold, so uh, really due for a rebound early next week. In the intermediate term, it remains moderately positive, but we've seen over the last few months since the October correction, 
that um, th that you know the character of the market has changed. So in the intermediate term, I'd say positive. The longer term is is still quite positive. So no no issues there. Let's have a look at the American uh, stock market. Now this is the S and P index, and we'll start by taking a very big picture view and looking at the S and P index on a monthly. Uh, basis. So each one of these candles is one month of action. You're looking at nearly 17 years of stock market history. So you can see that there hasn't really been that much of a change. Yes, it was very volatile last week, but big picture hasn't really changed. However, you will notice that markets are uh, quite overbought technically and possibly are starting to roll over. So it's certainly something worth watching. Zeroing in on a daily chart. If we expand back a little bit, you can see there's been an enormously strong trend running throughout 2014. For the first time, uh, we saw a significant excursion underneath the 150-day moving average. It was only brief, but it was something that we haven't seen before. And now that's been followed by a series of um, higher lows and, and lower highs. So we're actually getting... Uh, a wedge forming here that could resolve itself to the upside or the downside. We don't know at this point in time. So coming back to the uh, the levels that I was referring to, uh, if we if we break uh, this 1990 level, which is we're pretty close to it, then I would it's not something I really want to see because that would give us a short term lower low. So I don't really want to see a break of 1990. And if we broke here, which is the, the lows of the October correction at 1820, then I would be really concerned and I'd be taking major steps to, um, to reduce exposure, not only to the American stock market, but to all stock markets. But frankly, I don't believe that's going to happen. I don't believe the fundamentals support that. And I'm still expecting a very positive year. But one way you've got to be extremely um, uh, extremely um, uh, focused on getting just the very best stocks that you can. Now it's turning to the Australian market. Uh, the ASX index, uh, 200 index, had a good week, up 87 points, and it was eight straight sessions higher. Now what's been going on here uh, is that it's really been a flight back to yield stocks, so the banks, Telstra, um, and the major industrial stocks that are paying uh, fully franked dividends above 5%. And that's come about because uh, I think the consensus now is that interest rates in Australia could well be cut next week, uh, and if not next week, then next month. And so people really are back to hunting around for high yield stocks. They're not getting any value. Um, most stocks are tracking sideways, so I don't think it's a particularly uh, terrific strategy. I think there are much better ways to make money in the stock market because, yes, you're getting a, um, uh, a decent dividend yield, but um, it's also possible that you may uh, lose that in terms of the capital value because you're not, you're not buying value at all. In fact, in a lot of cases, you, you are paying uh, a bit too much. So that was the reality of the Australian market last week. Let's look at commodities. Gold finished down $12 on the week to $12.83. Um, it's still in this zone of indecision. Is this the start of a new bull market that will last for several years? Or is this just another uh, bounce in an overall bear market that's been running for three years? The answer to that is um, I still don't know. Um, I favour, I'm certainly leaning towards the fact that it's the first leg up in a new bull market. I think the weight of evidence is more on that favour. Um, and the pattern on the on the GDX index, uh, the American um, Gold Stock Index, certainly supports that view. But um, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not totally convinced that's the case. So I'm still looking for some confirmation. And either way, I would expect to see a bit of a pullback um, in uh, in gold stocks uh, before a major wave three advance were to occur. Um, just we'll just go and have a look at the copper. Uh, sorry, at the uh, gold charts now. So we'll start with U.S. dollar gold. <clears throat> 
on a daily basis. And if we pan back, we can see that we had a, uh, an, an important support level just under 1200, about 1190. And that was first created in June of 2013, again in December of 2014, uh, 13, and then in October. That support level was broken. Uh, so gold made a, a break to the downside. The fact that it's now rallied back above that level is um, suggestive that this could be a, a final false break, which often happens, just to basically you know clean out all the longs in the market. Gold came back into that range, had another test of support, has moved higher, and is and is butting up against this resistance of this downtrending line. So it's important uh, as to what where gold goes from here. So the question is, is this just another rally in a three year bear market? Or is this the first leg up and we're going to get a minor pullback and then the real show is going to start and gold can start to move uh, back into uptrend. So at this stage, the answer is still indeterminate, but it's certainly, I think the weight of evidence points to um, to the bullish scenario, I believe. Let's look at the GDX index. We see a very similar pattern here uh, where we had a, a key support level. Uh, it broke in October. Um, we bounced around there for a couple of months and now we're back into the range. So I think some uh, some more positive signs on, on, uh, on gold. Just to give you an idea, the start of the, the previous uh, bull markets in gold stocks have generally seen uh, advances of between one and two hundred percent once we've had the final capitulation. So, if this is the start of a new bull market, the potential upside is very, very substantial indeed. Now, copper managed to hold steady at two dollars forty-nine, but it really has been smashed along with so many other commodities, and, and it's not a great sign for the global economy. But there's certainly um, some things that perhaps indicating that copper is less relevant these days as, as an indicator, certainly a bit less relevant than it used to be. A crude oil bounced uh, back a little bit from 44 to 48 on Friday night, um, but it's still way too early to jump into energy stocks. Getting these sort of short-term rebounds is just uh, the, a part and parcel of a normal bear market. Um, but we could be close to a capitulation low in oil, so it's certainly worth watching. The, the thing that's concerning me the most, though, is the possible defaults in the high yield energy bond market. And that could be a real concern and could filter out into the broader banking sector. So that's certainly something to watch. There's the spot copper chart. So it's found a little bit of stabilization in the last week. So the overall strategic approach, um, <clears throat> nothing has changed in the last week. Um, the US market remains the most reliable growth market to my mind. It's certainly the best value and all the fundamentals are sitting in the best uh, position. You can improve your odds even more by staying with the very best biotech and digital technology stocks. Um, members of special share education know very well what those stocks are. Um, if you're not a member, then there is still plenty of pitfalls out there, even within those sectors. So, uh, so be careful or, uh, or get some additional advice. There's also opportunities in India and Asia via some ETFs, some, some pretty exciting things happening in those areas. And again, members will, uh, will know what, uh, what particular ones I'm talking about there. And of course, buying gold stocks on retracement once we get confirmation uh, could be a, an extremely profitable uh, venture over the next year or two. Uh, if you're not a member of Special Share Education, you'd like to know more about the sort of services that uh, that I provide, then there's information on our website. And if you wish to contact me, always happy to communicate. There's my email address. That's it for this week. Cheers.